how these uh, seemingly you know, uh, competing requirements are satisfied at the same time. One is high compaction, and the other is high efficiency for or functioning, uh, transcription or replication. So this is the illustration of the, uh, the how uh, the genome DNA is organized. The DNA wraps around histone proteins, and this particle is called a uh, nucleosome. And an array of nucleosome uh, is called chromatin fiber. And chromatin fiber uh, forms uh, loops of kilobase to megabase size. And th these loops uh, collapse to various extent, uh, depending on how uh, uh, histones inside the loops are uh, chemically uh, modified. And uh, these uh, uh, you know, collapsed loops, uh, chromatin domains, they are sometimes called topologically associating domains, TADs, uh, tend to gather together to form compartments. And inside the, the uh, cell nucleus, chromosomes do not mix largely with each other, uh, but show uh, territories. So such uh, you know, hierarchical uh, genome organization was revealed by the recent technical uh, advancement, uh, such as uh, the development of super resolution microscopy and uh, high throughput biochemical analysis. In particular, the high C method and the related methods contributed greatly to, to revealing uh, this uh, modern view. And I think uh, we need to develop uh, a unified view bridging uh, various different experimental data. So oh, I think that the computational modeling is, is necessary to, to understand uh, these data in a unified way. And uh, uh, in particular, that the, the physics-based modeling is necessary to understand the, the flexibly changing dynamical state of cell nucleus. And here, uh, the loops, domains, compartments, and territories are the uh, building blocks of the genome. Here, uh, this is an uh, example or figure uh, of the high C contact map uh, taken from this literature. And uh, uh, the color intensities here represents the, uh, uh, the frequency or the probability of the contacts are formed between two different positions of chromosomes. So the, the thicker, the, the stronger intensity the color shows, uh, the more chance uh, of the uh, contact formations we can find in between uh, these uh, two chromatin lo loci. And we can see that uh, block patterns near the diagonal line uh, that represents the domain structures and uh, checkerboard pattern. Uh, and the uh, checkerboard pattern uh, represents uh, the sign of compartments. So uh, one domain and the other uh, uh, belongs to the uh, same compartment, and but the other domain belongs to the different compartment. So the checkerboard pattern is a hallmark of the compartmentalization. And if we uh, magnify uh, this part uh, like this, we can see further the fine uh, domain structures. And these are uh, TADs, chromatin domains of about a um, megabase size. And uh, uh, when we further magnified uh, the, uh, the broke domain patterns, we can find, uh, you know, uh, peak intensities, two dots at the corner uh, of uh, this block, and the, the peaks and stripes inside the block. So these uh, inside block signal should represent some uh, specific contacts uh, formed uh, in, in the uh, you know, functioning 
complex, uh, like enhancer promoter uh, loops, for example. And uh, these co corner dots uh, should represent that uh, the uh, chromatin domain is formed by looping. So or the contacts between uh, these loop boundaries are represented by uh, dots at the corner of the block. And uh, uh, we believe that the, this looping is formed by the work of uh, cohesin. And here the cohesin is a molecular motor that can slide along the chromatin chain. And with such uh, sliding motion, uh, the relative uh, motion of the chromatin chain is the, uh, to extrude a loop from the uh, cohesin ring. So uh, with this uh, loop extrusion, uh, the, the, the loops uh, are, are collapsed to various extent, uh, depending on the, uh, how the histones inside the loop uh, are chemically modified. And roughly speaking, we have two types of domains. One type is uh, transcriptionally active, gene active, uh, sometimes called type A domains, and the other is gene inactive, uh, type B domains. And type A domains tend to uh, gather together to form compartment A, and uh, type B domains tend to form compartment B. And in this illustration, compartment B is represented as a uh, wet region. And uh, we can see that compartment B accumulates near uh, the nuclear lamina. Lamina is a, a protein mesh network uh, on the uh, inner uh, surface of the nuclear membrane. And also oh, compartment B uh, uh, accumulates around nucleolus. Nucleolus is a liquid droplet composed of ribosomal RNA and the related factors. So or in, uh, in a uh, microscope image, the structure looks like this. This is an electron microscope image of HeLa cell and uh, that has a, a big nucleus. And we can see the, the uh, mosaic structure here and here the dark region is heterochromatin that corresponds gene inactive compartment B and uh, the light gray region is uh, euchromatin that corresponds to uh, compartment A, uh, gene active region. And the uh, uh, dark uh, region here is nucleolus. And uh, because uh, chromatin moves in a dynamical way in living uh, cells, so uh, we can expect uh, such structure, uh, this type of structure uh, could be formed through a phase separation of chromatin, like uh, water and oil on the plate. And this hypothesis of uh, phase separation of uh, different types of chromatin uh, can be supported by the observation that heterochromatin protein 1, SP1, can breach two H3K9 maturated nucleosomes. And uh, because H3K9 maturated nucleosomes are abundant in type B domains, we can uh, expect that effective attractive forces between type B domains mediated by HP1 breaching. And uh, this, this uh, picture shows the, uh, that HP1 uh, can form liquid droplets in vitro. And if the similar droplets are formed in vivo, then that the uh, type B domains uh, around uh, this HP1 droplet should be attracted uh, to, to these droplets and uh, they will grow larger uh, to become, uh, you know, compartment B or heterochromatin uh, region. So this is the hypothesis proposed by these uh, papers. And uh, based on uh, this hypothesis, various computational models were developed uh, by assuming the effective attractive interactions between type B domains. But uh, there is a difficulty uh, 
to use this assumption. Because if we uh, try to simulate the whole entire genome, not a single chromosome, but if we uh, try to simulate the whole entire genome, then that this uh, attractive forces, uh, uh, you know, make type B domains aggregate uh, toward the, uh, the core uh, of the uh, nucleus. So heterochromatin region, compartment B, is formed at the center of the nucleus. But the observation shows uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the bright uh, spots here uh, represents type B regions. Type B regions accumulate around uh, nuclear uh, periphery. So this is the, uh, the opposite results. So uh, this discrepancy was uh, resolved by the computational modeling by uh, uh, introducing two competitive assumptions. I mean, one is the attractive force between type B domains as we discussed, and the other is attractive force between type B domain and the nuclear lamina. Lamina is a uh, you know, mesh network uh, on the inner side of the nuclear membrane. And uh, uh, if uh, a subtle balance is achieved between these two type of forces, then uh, we can uh, you know, expect uh, that this uh, structure uh, should be uh, reproduced by computational modeling. So this hypothesis became uh, uh, the you know a most widespread hypothesis or the uh, you know uh, the most widely believed hypothesis at present. But I think uh, this hypothesis has some difficulties. So first, uh, we need to fine tune the parameter sets uh, in computational models to uh, reproduce this structure by taking a subtle balance between two competitive forces. But uh, it sounds somehow strange that uh, because that uh, we can expect that the mesoscopic structure like this should be robust against uh, small perturbations. But uh, in this hypothesis, uh, we need a, a subtle tuning, a calibration of parameters. And second, uh, this, uh, you know, the second attractive force between chromatin and uh, nuclear lamina uh, is mediated by a protein complex. So uh, the interaction range uh, it should be uh, rather uh, short, about 10 nanometer or so. Uh, because, uh, you know, chromosomes uh, separated several micrometer away from the nuclear lamina cannot reach this range. And uh, the system is far from ergodic. I mean that the system is not the solid state, that the chrom chromosome uh, flexibly, dynamically moves inside the living cells, but uh, uh, it is far from ergodic. I mean, each chromosome moves only a few micrometer during the interface, and uh, this uh, diameter of this vessel, nucleus, is 10 micrometer. So all the chromosomes separated from the nuclear lamina cannot reach the uh, interaction range of this second force. So I feel uh, the hypothesis has difficulties, so uh, we propose uh, an alternative hypothesis. And for that purpose, uh, we you know, examine uh, the uh, physical properties of chromatin domains by uh, using a polymer model. So our polymer models consists of uh, you know, 20 or 30 polymer chains, and each polymer chain is uh, represents 100 kilo base length chromatin chain. And uh, each chain is a bed and spring polymer chain, and each bed represents one kilo base, kilo base segment. So also it has several uh, nucleosomes. So uh, in type B chain, we assumed the HP1 mediated attractive interactions working between uh, these one kilo base segments. And we did not assume uh, the HP1 mediated attractive force between segments in type A chains because uh, 
uh, H3K9 methylated nucleosomes are uh, infrequent, uh, rare in type A chains. And I should emphasize uh, the important role of cohesive movement in these chains. And uh, here that the pink bones represents uh, cohesin, and uh, the cohesin shows the sliding movement along the chromatin chain. And, and that uh, extrude uh, a chromatin loop like this. And uh, uh, an important difference between type A and type B chains is that uh, in type A chains, type A chains can bind uh, uh, a variety of uh, functional uh, factors. Uh, they form, uh, you know, a large sized uh, functional complex like a transcription complex with RNA polymerase two. And uh, these uh, large complex should prevent the smooth moving of cohesin. So they should work as roadblocks as suggested, suggested by the recent experimental reports. So uh, if they work as roadblocks, uh, the cohesin uh, should be trapped here and there. So, so we have the transiently trapped loops here and there in type A chains. But uh, we assumed uh, uh, the uh, density of world blocks uh, is small in type B chains. Uh, the functional complex uh, is not so uh, uh, frequent in type B chains. So cohesion can move smoothly uh, within type B chains that bring about the effective attractive interactions between uh, these uh, pink bonded sites. So, Effective attractive force uh, works uh, everywhere inside the type B chains with the uh, smooth moving of cohesin, and that should strongly collapse compact uh, the type B chain. And, and in type A chains, uh, because the loops are traps uh, at, uh, here and there, so the uh, configuration is rather extended having the open structure, that, that difference can be quantified by calculating the radius of gyration. This is a plot of radius of gyration uh, as a function of the length of the observing window. And uh, we see that the, uh, the simulated RG of type A chains can be fitted uh, to a single exponent with the exponent of 0.4, but the uh, type B chain uh, RG of type B chain cannot be fitted to a, a single exponent, but shows uh, saturating behavior. And such difference is consistent with the observed data uh, measured uh, with the super resolution uh, microscopy observation. And uh, uh, I should say that the, the naive uh, two body uh, attractive interactions between uh, segments cannot explain this saturating behavior, but uh, the many body effect through the cohesive movement was necessary to uh, explain uh, this saturation behavior in a consistent way. So, okay, uh, with this uh, chromatin domain modeling, uh, next uh, we derived the, the effective coarse grained interactions between domains. That is, the, the, these are the results of the, uh, the one kilobase resolution polymer model as previously discussed. And from these simulated results, we derived the coarse grained uh, effective interactions between 100 kilobase chromatin domains. So this is a result for the type A domain. And uh, this axis is the distance between two type A domains. So uh, the effective interactions between type A domains show uh, mild repulsive interactions uh, with the uh, Gaussian-like force form. And uh, this is the result for the uh, type B chains. And uh, uh, this is the case simulated without cohesin, and this is the case with cohesin. And uh, without cohesin, when uh, chromatin density low here, it's small, uh, the effective attraction between 
uh, effective interaction between type B domains show attractive interactions like, like this. But uh, with the, the larger uh, chromatin density, it shows uh, uh, mild repulsive interactions. And with cohesin, when uh, the chromatin density uh, is high, uh, it shows uh, the strong repulsive force. And this value, uh, rho is 0.4 in this unit, uh, is similar to the chromatin density inside the uh, living cell nucleus. So we can say that in uh, live cells, uh, effective uh, coarse grained interactions between type B domains uh, show the repulsive interactions, even with the uh, attractive uh, HP1 mediated interactions between nucleosomes. This is because uh, some free energy cost is required to open domains that are strongly collapsed uh, through the work of cohesin uh, running uh, for uh, promoting the attractive HP1 mediated interaction between different domains. So this is the reason why we have uh, this attract, uh, repulsive force as the effective cost grain interactions. So, uh, we used these uh, simulated results to construct the model for the whole genome simulation. So uh, we fitted these uh, numerical data uh, by uh, uh, mathematically convenient forms uh, like this. And we said, the, uh, we assumed the, the BA interactions are intermediate between A and BB. Uh, so the, uh, the uh, so-called Flory Huggins chi parameter is always zero with this parameter setting. Uh, this means that with this parameter setting, uh, we cannot expect the phase separation of this system through the uh, energy-driven mechanism. But uh, with the uh, large contribution from the entropic uh, mechanism, uh, the system shows the phase separation. This can be shown by using a toy model. This is a polymer blend model that consists of 100 type A chains and 100 type B chains. Those 200 chains are mixed in a periodic box and starting from the random initial configuration and after the Lange van dynamics simulations, we have the phase separated lamina structure like this. And it is interesting to see that if we confine these 200 chains in a, a rigid sphere, then we have the phase separated results and type B chains accumulate near the sphere boundary. We did not assume any uh, attractive interaction between uh, type B chains and the sphere uh, boundary, but uh, uh, this structure uh, was generated in a spontaneous way through the phase separation mechanism. So I think that th this is similar to the accumulation of heterochromatin near uh, nuclear periphery. So oh, now we are ready to simulate the whole genome. So, oh, so uh, oh, Masaki, just yes. one of you, um, if you can wrap up in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, okay. So, uh, uh, I, I'm sorry. So, uh, uh, we can assign each 100 kilobase region as A, B, or U, depending on the local contact intensity. I mean, in type A region, the, the functional specific contacts are frequent. So, the local contact intensity is large. And in type B region, the local contact intensity is, is small. So, uh, by counting the local contact intensity, we can identify whether the, each local region is A, B, or U. Uh, U is the intermediate between A and B we define. And with this uh, definition, we perform the polymer uh, simulations of uh, 46 chromosome chains. And uh, we need to uh, be careful uh, about the initial condition of this simulation because uh, uh, you, you know, during the interface, uh, chromosomes uh, are not fully mixed, but uh, uh, it, they retain the, the memory of the initial uh, configuration. So we simulated 
the uh, we prepare the initial configuration by simulating the final uh, stage of the mitotic process by putting each chromosome toward one po uh, point in a space and then uh, allow the relaxing of uh, chromosome uh, by assuming that the condensing constraint disappears at this stage. And uh, this is an example of simulated trajectory. Uh, the, uh, we assume the uh, nuclear membrane wrapping around the system and the uh, system reaches a st steady state when the uh, tension of the membrane and the pressure inside uh, are balanced with each other. And we can see that at the stationary state, the system is phase separated into compartment A yellow or region and compartment B, blue region, and uh, the U region is can be seen at the uh, interface of A and B. And green parts here are nucleolus. Uh, we model the nucleolus as an assembly of small particles here. And uh, we skip this. And uh, this phase separated structure can be uh, quantitatively assessed by simulating the high C contact map. So this is the, uh, the, the lower triangle is the experimental high C contact map and the upper triangle is the uh, simulated high C contact map. And we can see that the checkerboard pattern uh, is, is similar uh, to each other and the block diagonal pattern is also reproduced by the simulation. And this can be quantified by calculating the uh, compartment signal that is PC1 or the, uh, this is the great, great, uh, largest eigenvalue uh, vector uh, of this contact matrix. And we can see again that the good agreement between experiment and simulation. And uh, this is the genome-wide comparison of the uh, PC1 uh, compartment signal. Uh, so uh, for different human cells, uh, so we can say that the compartment uh, is well reproduced with simulation. And uh, this is the average contact frequency uh, plotted as a function of the sequence separation S for all different human cells. This is fibroblast, and this is uh, uh, this is a fibroblast, and this is a lymphoblast. And we can say that we just use the same parameter set for uh, simulating different cells. I mean, there is no need to calibrate the uh, parameter sets for or simulating different cells. Uh, this is a comparison for the uh, inter-chromosome uh, uh, contacts, uh, contacts between different chromosomes. And again, we, we see that uh, good agreement between simulation and observations. And uh, this is the uh, probability to find type B regions near nuclear membrane. This, is, this axis shows the distance from the nuclear membrane, nuclear lamina is here. And we see that type B accumulates near uh, lamina and type A is, is depleted from lamina. So this is the lamina association and uh, we see the similar tendency uh, near nucleolus. Uh, this is nucleolus association. And this uh, lamina association and nucleolus association can be quantified uh, by protein like this. And uh, this is a, an example chromosome case for la uh, lamina and nucleolus. And this is the genome-wide comparison again. Uh, we see a good agreement. So uh, this is a summary of the uh, model results. The model quantitatively reproduced observed genome architecture with high precision. So uh, the previous computational models used a massive amount of experimental input uh, to, to build knowledge-based potentials. But in this simulation, only a dozen of uh, parameter sets were uh, estimated from the physical argument, and that was enough to reproduce the, the you know, precise genome structure. So uh, main emphasis here is that unfolding uh, was necessary, uh, important, and uh, that through the heterogeneous repulsive interactions and chromatin chains, the genome structure uh, was reproduced. And in more pre precisely saying that the repulsive uh, driven phase separation of chromatin uh, generated territories, compartments, lamina association, and nucleolus association in a reasonable way. And uh, these uh, heterogeneous repulsive interactions arise uh, from the heterogeneous distribution of world blocks, that is, uh, fu functional complexes of cohesion. Uh, roadblocks of cohesive movement. And we can say that cohesive movement largely determines domain's physical properties. And it is interesting to see that heterogeneous movement remains after the system reaches the stationary interface state. 
Uh, th these are the plots for the magnitude of mean square displacement, and we can uh, find the slow movement near nuclear uh, lamina or uh, near nuclear auras. And that is consistent with the experimental observations. The blue points here show the slow movement of uh, nucleosomes near nu uh, nuclear auras or nuclear lamina. And it is interesting to see the uh, existence of the long wavelengths collective movement of chromatin uh, domains. Uh, the color here shows the direction of motion. And uh, it is uh, an open question whether these dynamic movement of the genome uh, is correlated uh, with the chromatin uh, dynamics uh, function distribution. And I think it is an important issue in the next stage. So this is the last slide. And uh, the all the calibrations uh, I talked today was performed by Shin Fujishiro, and our results were published in these uh, literatures. So thank you very much. I probably I uh, spent uh, uh, extra time. That's the end. Thank you.